Well, the Fed has certainly been under some pressure to lower rates in here. Now, they did just have a recent FOMC meeting, and we're going to get into that here in just a minute. We also want to do an example of the interest expense, especially when you compare it to the fees for doing an HTA, and we're going to look out at December 26 corn. So as always, keep in mind everything we're discussing is for education and example purposes. Make sure you guys understand and know your own risk tolerance as we go through the information. Like I said, that last FOMC meeting uh, was on July 30th, and the Fed decided to leave the Fed funds rate unchanged at between four and a quarter to four and a half percent. This is the fifth consecutive meeting that they've left this unchanged. And essentially, this is just your overnight rate that banks can lend money to each other. What your, your typical loan uh, documents and rates are based off of are a 10 year yield. But nonetheless, after that FOMC meeting, I believe two days later, we had payrolls numbers come in. And I just wanted to show you. So July 30th was the uh, most recent FOMC meeting. The next meeting uh, would occur in September. And prior to that payrolls meeting, uh, the Fed CME watch tool had a 63% probability of a rate cut at the September meeting, which would drop rates to about four to four and a quarter percent. After this payrolls number came in here, that probability jumped to 90%. And obviously that was due to the heavy revisions that we saw in the payrolls data. Now this is your 10 year uh, treasury note yield. So this is again, what most of the retail uh, interest and loan uh, rates are based off of. And as you can see, this is your daily chart on the FOMC day. You really didn't have much of a reaction. It just kind of stayed flat as we met expectations of the Fed leaving that rate unchanged. However, you can see the big drop in the in the yield after that payrolls number here on that 10 year as well, going from about 4.4% uh, down to 4.2%. Uh, Here's your weekly chart of that 10 year yield. We've really been stuck between four and a half and a 4% range. Obviously the lower end of that can help uh, reduce some interest costs when we're looking at our note or our loans. Uh, and certainly when we sit here and look at this weekly chart, you could argue that there might be a little bit of a bearish lean here in the near term. Now, just for fun and maybe a little bit of nostalgia, this is your three month chart of that same 10 year note yield. And obviously we can go back to the 80s and see where we had 16%, 15% rates on that 10 year note. And when you factor in that spread of maybe two or 3%, that's how you get those 18 to 19% interest rates. What I think is interesting about this chart and where a lot of people in this market um, you know, are, are conflicted is the fact that historically rates are still rather low. If we do get into more of an inflationary environment, you can certainly see where this rates have potential to come in higher. However, given some of the recent data and economic uncertainty, I think the, the lean is more to the lower side. So as we get into our example, we want to just look at HTA fees compared to the interest cost if you were to hedge using the board. And we've been talking with some producers about going out and beginning to look at uh, um, hedging bushels for the December 26 contract. And what we're hearing is somewhere between six and eight cents for an HTA fee that far out. We went with seven cents a bushel, which over a 14 month period comes out to about $350 in interest costs. Now, when we go to doing something like this, maybe on the board and using a hedging line of credit, we're gonna figure an 8% interest rate uh, for that same 14 month period. We're gonna budget $2,000 against your line of credit. What that basically boils down to is $770 in initial margin, and then another like uh, 1230, I believe, uh, for some margin access, which equates to about a 25, 25 cent move uh, in the core market to give this, this hedge a little bit of breathing room. But nonetheless, when you take that 8% on the $2,000 uh, line of credit, you'd be at about $187 for that same 14 months or about four cents a bushel. Now, obviously, depending on who your broker is or what you're using, there's gonna be some commission and exchange and transaction fees with that. So you might figure an estimate about five and a half cents a bushel or about $275 for that um, 14 months. I think what's important to point out here is that these are just the numbers that we got to give you to help you make a more informed decision. Ultimately, the correct choice is the one that's best for you. But you can see where uh, the, the elevator who is carrying the risk of the futures contract might need to uh, charge a bit of a higher fee. Because at the end of the day, even though we have budgeted $2,000.25 uh, worth of room on the core market, there is no guarantee that this market won't go higher 
um, you know, from, from your initial head. So just kind of keep that in mind, you know, as you're looking at this. As we wrap things up in here, at the end of the day right now, it certainly seems like the lean on rates is to come in lower. The Fed has been pressured by the administration, but it also looks like the bond market is reacting to some of this economic data as well, which I believe will also help encourage the Fed to kind of bring these rates a little bit lower. At the end of the day, too, when you're making your farm and marketing decisions, it's good to know your interest expense and your cost compared to your HTA fees. You can also use this uh, maybe for you know lines of credit on input and things like that. Just have the numbers and the facts so that you can make a good informed decision. At the end of the day, we always encourage guys, you got to just do what you can live with, whatever you're most comfortable with. For us, we feel that it's more important to make an informed decision that helps you capture the value overall of a of a hedge in the future. So example, if you 470 is profitable, for us, it's much more important that we get that value locked in rather than splitting hairs between whether you do it in a hedge account or an HTA. That's gonna vary person to person and it's up to you to make that decision. Again, we just want you to have the numbers. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help. As always, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We always enjoy making the content for you.